Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Unmasked Conversations with Entrepreneurs. Tonight, let me welcome our guests. First, we'll start with our special guest, Denise Teller. Good evening, Denise. Welcome to the Good show. Good evening. Thank you. And we're going to also introduce our regulars. We'll uh, start from the way I see their pictures. <laughs> we'll start with Julie. Hello. How hey, are you, Julie? And then we have Chanel. Hey, good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. And we also have Jeff. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. So Denise Taylor is the founder of the First Wise Club. She has a group, support group on Facebook. She's also an author. Um, she's written a book as well. And so I'm the good thing. And it's a motivational book. So we're going to let Denise start out tonight telling us about her First Wise Club support group and then a little bit about her book, and then we will start the questions and, and additional information as we get started. Absolutely. So let me just say thank you for the invitation. I appreciate being on your platform and get a chance to talk a little bit about the First Wives Club. Um, the First Wives Club was actually formed as a result of me just trying to help a small group of friends, believe it or not. Um, as my husband and I were approaching our 25th wedding anniversary, and I was in the midst of planning our celebration, I was sending out invitations to my friends, and all of them got it going on, but the response I was getting back from them was like, girl, I'm proud of you, but I'm not sure if we're going to make it, <laughs> and I started reflecting and asking myself, how did we get here? You know, like what were some of the things that was helpful to our journey to getting to 25 years? And really through that reflection, it was really identifying the relationships that I had with people who were willing to partner with us, invest in us, mentor us, and kind of coach us through those rough patches. So it wasn't that it was easy. It's just that we made a decision and a choice to move forward. So I reached out to a small group of women um, and I actually invited them over for lunch. And before the lunch, I created the Facebook group. And I just thought it would be a place that we could stay connected, you know, the few of us. And before I knew it, you know, I started sharing different things that I would say are hot topics for wives. And it started resonating and the group has grown organically to be over 700 people at this point. I've never done any kind of membership drive, if you will. It just was about sharing experiences and having some real conversations and talking about some real topics that caused it to develop and grow. And so essentially it is a support network for wives. Um, the whole I'm the good thing mantra is from scripture in Proverbs 18, 22. It says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. And I always tell the women that God said you're the good thing, not your man. Okay, so your confidence comes from the fact that God believes that about you. And that is what I try to energize in the wives who are a part of the network. Um, I also try to make sure we have something of substance of all, at all times because we can get dressed up cute and play real housewives, right? And have a good time and go to lunch and all that. But when you go home, you have some real things that you have to deal with. And so I think there are plenty of outlets for entertainment. And I will never discount that because I like to bling out with the best of them. But I wanted to make sure that the things that we are expressing through the First Wise Club are things that people are really addressing and afraid to talk about. Many wives, unfortunately, are feeling as if they are alone. They feel like it's only happening to them and have a tendency to become really reclusive and not seek help. And more often than not, the feedback that I get from wives is that they begin to realize they are not by themselves, that someone is eager to talk about it and accepting to share their experiences and say, hey, I don't, I, I've made it this far, but I'm still growing too, or I don't have it all together, but we're working on it and we're committed to one another. So that's kind of how uh, the whole First Wives Club has come about. To my amazement though, 
there are people who are literally a part of the club across the United States and even beyond. There are women who are in the club from Africa. And to me, that is a great tr uh, testament to how far reaching this message can go. There are women who are part of the group in St. Martin, in the Bahamas. And so, like I said, I've never done anything that was a drive. People who are there were invited to be there because someone they knew was in the group and said, hey girl, you need to come over here and be a part of what's going on. And so one of the biggest challenges is, I feel it was a bit of a divine calling. It wasn't something that I was like, oh, I got this vision and I wanted, you know, I just wanted to help people. And so through this, I have, to your point, been handed a business, right? And handed something that I have to be fiscally responsible for and make sure that the services that we are offering make sense and that they're transformative and they're impactful. But at the same time, I have to make sure that we are indeed meeting people where they're at. And so a lot has come in these last seven, eight months that the First Wives Club has been um, in effect, of which is the book. And the book is a culmination of things that I shared, especially in those early days that really energized the growth and that was most impactful to the women who were a part of the group that kind of encouraged them to invite others to come in. And so I call it the I'm the good thing because I just believe that's what we are. That's, you know, the mantra that I want to continue to expound upon and make sure that women understand about themselves. So that's kind of the genesis of it all. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited about it. So thank you so much for that. So my first question to you, and we kind of discussed this a little bit. So for me, what, if I was on Facebook and I saw the group The First Wives, I would wonder whether or not if that group was applicable to me because I'm not my husband's first wife, but it's my first time getting married. So how would a woman like me fit in your group? So the first thing I will say is that all wives are welcome. Now, the only experience that I can share with you is the experience of being his wife. Okay, so all wives are welcome, but you're going to hear me talk about in terms of being his wife. The First Wives Club is really about the fact that many times we as wives kind of find ourselves settling back into the shadows. The First Wives Club is really a call or a mandate to prioritize yourself, to move to a primary position, to accept that responsibility and role. It's really interest, interesting because I get that a lot, but I have not been inspired to change because to me, that message of priority is important. All wives are welcome. Sometimes I get, is this for first ladies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can join too, right? <laughs> you know, you don't have to be his first wife. You don't have to be the first lady of a church. You just need to be a wife. And, you know, like I said, the messaging is going to come from a place of talking about the heterosexual relationship because that's the experience I'm most familiar with. That's the only one that I've had for the last 25 years. So I um, just, I, I, I can't say it's exclusive, but that's who we are here, you know, to kind of message to. Thank you so much for that. Julie, do you have a question for me? Um, thank you, Denise, for being here. Um, all the information that you shared is, is right on point. I, I am not a wife. I've never been married, but I'm interested in, for those that are listening, men and women alike, um, what's the best way to strengthen a relationship during this COVID-19. We know COVID-19, a lot of families, husbands and wives, relationships have been um, in the house a lot longer than they're probably used to or want to. Mm -hmm. And so in your opinion, what, what are some best ways to strengthen a relationship? Yeah, one of the things that uh, was really interesting in this journey is the fact that right at the time when it was time to publish the book is when we kind of went into this whole COVID experience, right? And when we went into it, I was like, oh, it's now the right time. You know, I, I'm not sure. And I was admonished many, many times that this definitely was the right time because 
you are in that house with your mate 24 7 and chances are y'all are getting on each other's nerves <laughs> so the pressure that is being put on relationships throughout this experience really is it is important to recognize that we all need a relief vial for one and so whether that is taking a walk or whether that is figuring out spacing in your home so that you guys can kind of take a break from one another and also being in a position where you're willing to allow for some grace because chances are everybody's getting stir crazy. And so we tend to be a little snippy, right? And our, our uh, patience is a little slower. We might be saying things in a tone that's not appreciated, but at the same time, we have to be willing to allow grace. Now, there are so many creative things that you can do at home. The one thing I would say, especially if you're home alone, is figure out how to get creative in your intimacy zones, right? You got the whole house. Go discover some new rooms and really experiment in ways that you may not have given uh, time to because you had that hustle and bustle in your schedule, right? So be very creative. I always say, take it as far as the two of you want to go with it, right? As long as you're both comfortable with it, there are no limits because it's you and you have a trusted relationship with your partner. In addition to that, I would say be intentional about breaking the monotony, right? So figure out how to do something creatively different. And it doesn't have to be structured the same way. So maybe it's something like hot dogs and, and uh, s'mores on the fire pit. Maybe it's something about eating outside on the porch. I had a couple um, that came over recently and she was talking about how they just made a dinner, you know, setting on their porch and they out, ate outside on the porch. It's changing it up so that the four walls just don't feel like they're caving in on you. And then the biggest thing that has been introduced in all of this is stress. Mm -hmm. The stress of finances, the stress of jobs, the stress of, you know, the pressures of choices and decisions around health and how long this is going to last. And any problem in a relationship is easily solved, not easy, but is better solved, I guess, through communication. So be willing to have those tough conversations with your spouse and really ask about how they feel. You know, try to tap into what's going on with them and be very empathetic as you're hearing that because they may be processing things that you just don't have perspective of. Many of us are working from home and those email messages, those Zoom meetings and all of that stuff is going on all day long. And so you really need to have a place where you can come and be safe in the relationship and really talk about how you may be feeling. So those are a few ideas um, that come to mind. Thank you, great question, Julie, great question. And that was very informative. So thank you, Denise. Chanel? Absolutely. So I'm excited. One, because I know Denise personally. We have um, known each other for over a year. She started out as our client. We helped her plan a trip to Greece and Paris last year. And mm -hmm. she has turned into a true friend. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to have her here. When the topic came up, we were all talking about, you know, relationships and marriages during quarantine. I was like, I know just the person. I was like, you got to talk to Denise. She is definitely the person to talk to. Um, and then also, same thing, I was at, I want to say that first initial lunch for the First Wives Club. And it has been inspirational um, and encouraging for me. You know, I'm newly married, so to speak. I mean, it's been five years for us. So I always look to Denise and Chuck and they are just so much fun. <laughs> We love hanging out with them. So um, it has been a blessing in my life and in my marriage. So I'm, I'm truly happy to be a part and to know Denise. But awesome. um, my question, and I guess it'd be a question, but um, just being, a t me and you had this conversation also, just being intentional about um, date night and prioritizing our partner. I think too often we get caught up in the hustle and bustle with work and businesses. And I have three small children and all those other things that life throws at you. But can you talk to you know, about being intentional with each other. Absolutely. And you know what? I, um, I, it's, it's interesting because I believe date night is important, but what that is really honing in on is the commitment to make connection, right? And to make sure that you're intentional about, about sit, setting aside a time where you're focused on one another. And so it doesn't have to be night, I guess is my point. 
right? So it can be morning time if that is a great time for you and your husband and you guys enjoy coffee together. You may find yourself making a, great, a really great commitment during the course of that time. But I think what we have to realize is that we, especially when we were maintaining a very busy schedule, how easy it is to just discount the value of making that connection. And so it's important to make sure you prioritize that. I got a funny story for you. So this week, I'm in the midst of doing a talk series for the First Wise Club. And it's been consuming a, quite a bit of my time. So I came down the other day and my husband, he was sitting downstairs. He was watching television or he, I don't even think he had the television on. But when I came down, I was instantly ready to begin just doing the housework, right? I have been tied up all day working. I had been preparing for these talk sessions. I had held the talk session and I came down and at that point, it's almost nine o'clock PM. And as I walked over to the sink to turn on the water, he just looks over and said, could you please not wash the dishes? Now on the surface, I'm like, why didn't he want me to wash the dishes, right? But in that moment, I had to recognize that what he was asking for was my time and my attention. Now, many of us would just overlook that statement and say, oh, I need to get these done and come up with a million reasons why that wasn't the important thing to do. But what he was asking for was a time for connection with me. And I had to make a choice to just say, you know what, these dishes are going to have to sit here for another night. It, it just is what it is. And I'm going to have to go over here and spend some time with him. So I think the thing that is important, it doesn't have to be a date night. It has to be a willingness and a commitment to spend the time in your relationship to make that that connection. And when, you're, when your husband is asking or your spouse, when your spouse is asking for that, you have to recognize and hear what they may not be saying, right? What, what he wasn't saying, he wasn't just saying, I don't care about the dishes, which we oftentimes just jump to that superficial kind of thing. But what he was really saying was, could you come over here and spend some time with me? You've been consumed all day. And so the priority of spending time can happen at any time. For us, I will tell you, our best conversations are first thing in the morning. We are well rested. We wake up. It's a little bit of just conversation. I call it pillow talk. We just sit there and we just happen to be the most free at that time to really talk about how we feel, what's going on. And so that's why I'm saying it's really about making that commitment to make a connection. Now, having said that, you gotta have fun too, right, Chanel? So you gotta do some things that really spur that excitement with one another. Um, and that's where those scheduled kind of activities come into play. One of the things that I actually suggested to the First Wives Club coming into the new year was one of the challenges that I put out there was to come work with your husband or your spouse work with your husband and I keep saying that because we got a guy on the call right so work with your spouse <laughs> to come up with a list of a to z right of things that you want to try um, you know, A for axe throwing, B for, you know, whatever the case may be and, and do it together because that's going to say, okay, over the course of the year when we're trying to figure out something to do and when we're trying to break up the boredom, here's a list that we can go to and say, here's what we want to try this year and begin checking some things off. And so that's going to create those opportunities to spend time in a unique and different way. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, hi. Um, as the only male on the call, I, and I've been married uh, 15 years, so I would like to know, thank you. I would like to know um, what is a recurring theme that you hear from, from women about some of the, the issues they may have in a in relationship? You know, you, you know that, um, that phrase, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there are a lot of things that you see that women may talk about that they maybe get frustrated about their spouse, their husband. Um, there may be some things that we men don't understand about women that we should know that they may talk to you about um, in confidence, but they may be afraid to talk to their spouse or their husband because they don't think we understand. 
Yeah. Um, that's my first question. And my second question is from a business perspective. What keeps you going? Um, this sounds like a lot of work. And what, <laughs> what motivates you to continue um, to, to strive and flourish and improve your business? Because I'm sure a lot of other women may be interested in trying to do what you're doing. And they'd be wondering, wow, how does she do that? How does she grow 700, you know, you know, members of her group? I would love to try to do that. What keeps you going? What keeps you inspired? And what keeps you on track to continue to make it grow? So I'll, I'll answer the first question two ways. Um, the biggest hot topic that is most impactful is infidelity. And unfortunately, it happens. And when it happens, it really just rocks the world of the wife. It hits from every angle possible. Um, and it is a very detonating activity. So that is the biggest hot topic. Um, and unfortunately, it has occurred more in relationships than I think we think. Um, and we also see where women have gotten involved in that as well. So that, that's a hot topic. But the biggest struggle is when that somehow in the relationship, that connection has gone dry. And they, women internalize that because we are very intimate in nature, right? We, we long for that interaction and that closeness. And uh, for us, many of us, that connection is far greater even than the act of intimacy is to feel that connection. And so when that goes dry, it just really sends them into a self-esteem spiral, and they just start unraveling and really feeling lost um, and unsure what to do. And so the advice that I would give to a guy is that it is so critically important to keep that health in the relationship and to recognize what is your wife's love language? Like, what does she get excited about and feed that? and be intentional about feeding, feeding that or making those deposits. Because if you make those deposits, you can withdraw whatever you want. And I'm just gonna write that blank check like that. So the second question. Hold on, can I, can I say something real absolutely. quick? Love language is very, very important. A lot of people don't even know what their love language is. Like I know mine personally, mine is um, affirmations, words of affirmation. Jeff, you did a great job, that's fantastic. My wife's is service. Mm -hmm. She she wants to see you do something, be active. Mm -hmm. So it's important to even know what your love language is mm -hmm. and um, know what your spouse's is. But a lot of people don't know. Do you know them all? Can you tell what they, I mean, can you just name them? Well, there's five different ones and I can't name them all, but I can kind of describe. I know one yeah. is yeah. Active, yeah. Active, active gifts. Active gifts. Uh oh, I'm getting some feedback. A little. Okay. Do you know what they are, Julie? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, quality time, gifts, acts of service, words of affirmation, and physical touch. Yeah, so I, I don't know that I would have got the words right, but I would have been able to describe them. <laughs> and so um, I would say um, that is critically important because that's like currency in your relationship. And as you make the deposits of what they want, not what you want them to want, right? But what they want, then the health of the relationship is viewed as such from both of the people involved, even though the two things that are occurring could be very different. So it's great that you know what they are and I hope that you are doing them well. <laughs> Let me, can I say one more thing on that? Mm -hmm. It's so funny because like you talked about the dishes, you work all day and you came home and do, went to do the dishes. Like I say, my wife is um, acts of service. If I do the dishes, she loves that. If I get the laundry, it's, it's the little, little things that you can do in a relationship as a, as a man that they can go a long, long way. And you know, it didn't have to be anything really fancy. It's just little things. The simplest things can just do wonders for your relationship and just keeping the house happy. And then if you do that, you know, she don't have to worry. And, and, then, and, what and then what happens is, is you, um, sh if, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it can build up and, and fester over time. And you and the woman thinking, I got to do these dishes again. He was sitting here playing video games. Give me a break. And but she may not say anything, but 
a week, a month, a year later, and she snaps on you. And it's like, well, what are you mad about? I didn't do anything. That's the oh, problem. You haven't done anything. You. <laughs> exactly. And you have no idea what her love language is and what you could have been doing all this time. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to just chime in on that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My husband and I, we went to counseling early on in our marriage to kind of help bond, learn each other better, right? And we did the love languages. And it was almost as a competition, like when she gave us this list of stuff to do for 30 days, right? And he was just rolling through them because it was like he wanted to check it off. <laughs> so it's like, no, just not a competition. We're supposed to take it easy. You're supposed to think it through. No, I did this today. What you going to do? No, no, no. That's not the way to approach it. But I agree. It was a, a really good exercise. Um, but I had to convince him it's not a, you know, we the don't have to be the first one to go to the counselor and say, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave my checks for this week. But it, it is. Um, the little things do make a big difference. Absolutely. Um, just so that everyone knows, there is an app that you can get on your phone um, that will take you through the assessment. And it will also, um, it does the assessment for both of you, you and your spouse. Um, and when you do the assessment, it will send you hints of things that you can do to feed into their love bank. And so it's something to try to help encourage relationships and to keep them, the vitality of them alive. Um, and so if someone's very interested in that, it was Chapman who came up with the uh, five love languages. And there is a, um, there's an app that you can take a quick assessment and it will highlight, just like uh, Jeff said, it will highlight the things that aspire that you are desiring or that relate well to you as well as what will relate well to your spouse you, so all right so let me answer the second question um so what keeps me motivated so i would say first and foremost i didn't sit down and say oh my god i got this idea about what i want to do and pursue it that way it was all very divinely for me and even up to, to this point it still led that way for me it's the transformation that's most important. There are other people who are coming alongside me who are helping me with the business aspect. And it's not because I'm not business savvy. And in fact, I am very business savvy, but I am so drawn into wanting to save families. And I am even more drawn into wanting to save families in this climate that we're in right now. One thing that I believe to be true is that if we can really get the family unit intact and we can help wives thrive. And I say that because wives are the heartbeat and temperature of that family. When she turns cold, that relationship turns cold. When she turns cold, that family is on the rocks, okay? So if we can get wives to thrive, then we can see effective change. So when I have a young lady, like the one who called me just over a month ago, reach out and call me in tears with two young children because she is feeling at wits in because of her relationship and she can go through the coaching program that we have in 30 days later not only see and feel better about herself but start to see things manifesting in her own marriage relationship that's the win for me right the win is being able to help families right where they are and being able to share with them things that can help them process and unpack what's going on because we internalize it all and no one is there to say one i hear you i've been there and two this is how you need to bring perspective to that and these are the things that's going to help you work through and cause that connection to re-energize with your spouse so um to me that's that's what keeps me driven and recognizing that everything that needs to come into play is not free is what's now saying, Denise, you better do some things <laughs> so that you can keep funding the vision that you have. And so creating those squad goals, you know, um, about who needs to be on your team and what that skill set needs to look like and what, you know, those people need to bring to bear is what's manifesting in my life right now. Thank you for that. Jeff, that was uh, your other question, right? Yes. Okay. So Denise, um, I know we spoke just a little bit about your book, I'm the Good Thing. And I know it's like part of a 30-day journal. 
Um, could you give us a little bit more insight on that and, and let us know whether or not if that's available now in case people are looking for it? Yep, absolutely. So I'm the good thing is absolutely available. I self published it um, and it came out this spring. So the, the way the book is uh, is defined is it kind of brings the reading together with the workbook. And so each day over the course of the 30 days, the reader, the wife, because that's who I, I wrote it for. I wrote it, if, it, well, I'll say it's inspired by wives, but I think anyone could read it if they're seeking personal development, any woman anyway. Um, but there's a reading for each day. And then there's an affirmation to speak out loud that goes along with the reading for the day. There's also a section for reflection, and there's also a section to establish that goal. And so the book can stand in and of itself. It's a, it, it, it probably is more synonymous with like a devotional, but it has that workbook kind of activity that comes along with it. So the book is for sale on the First Wives Club website, which is firstwivesclub.live, um, and it's available for purchase. But I, I kind of felt like there needed to be something more, especially if there was someone who was like the young lady who, who knew she needed help, but needed some support and coaching through it. Um, so the coaching program, it leverages the book, but it incorporates through a virtual experience uh, videos, and then they get to partner with me as touch points throughout that 30 day journey. And so the book is uh, still the main thing that they're working through each day, covering each of the topics um, that are presented within the book. Um, it alliterates out um, in a very easy read form because I'm not a heavy reader. So it, it had to be something that was in bite size enough chunks for me to be able to maintain um, and take advantage of. And then they go through the reflections. Now, this isn't something I review, right? This is a part of your journey. And if you're at the point where you know you need help, then you're compelled to make the commitment to go through the process. But what's very interesting is I have found, especially for women who want to make an investment in themselves, this is what I say. You maintain your body, you maintain your hair, you maintain your house, you maintain your car, you need to maintain your relationship too. You need to make the same type of investment so that it can stay fresh with you, you can stay challenged in it, your resolve and commitment can be sustained through it. And so it's not just for women who are at a place where they know they need help, but it's also for women who know they want that charge, that recommitment. That marriage accountability program is called Love Walk. And I chose Love Walk because it's something that we're walking out together over the course of those 30 days. Um, and so when we went through, we had women who were early in their marriage participate. We had women who had been married 25 years participate. And everyone got something out of the process by going through that journey. And so the book can stand alone. It's available for purchase. And my next cohort for the um, the marriage accountability program is actually going to start on July 1st. Enrollment for that cohort ends on this Sunday, but we start a new cohort on the first of every month. So um, it'll be another one that will start on the 1st of August, another on the 1st of September, but we are currently in the enrollment process uh, for our July cohort. Thank you so much for that. So Denise already went into the next segue because I was going to ask her oh. <laughs> to talk about the Love Walk program. So do you guys have any questions for her regarding the 30-day um, um, marriage accountability coaching? I think everybody's muted. Oh, is um, just, just a comment mainly, not a question, um, but even just to kind of piggyback off what Denise said is how, you know, when I joined in with the First Wives Club, five years into my marriage, we didn't have any, you know, infidelity issues or those communication issues or any of that. It was just, I just was looking for a support. <laughs> I just wanted more, to hear more women. We don't have many married friends, you know, and my mom, I don't want to always talk about her, you know, about too deep into my marriage. So it was good just to kind of have that network. But then to hear the stories, you would hear women that were married 20, 30 years, to, um, you know, to hear things that they've overcome and how they are thriving was just encouraging for me. So I do appreciate that network. 
Um, one question that's kind of a little bit off topic of what we're talking about, but Denise, how involved or uninvolved is your spouse in your business? So it's interesting because over the course of the last couple of weeks, um, I think last week and this week, one of the things that we do, we have two daughters that are in college. Um, we have one that's a senior and one that's a junior. And so probably since they were in high school, I kind of watch TV with them. So like whatever they watch, that's what I watch, mainly because I wanted to kind of see what they were getting exposed to. I wasn't judgmental. You know, I watched Are You the One or whatever those crazy shows. And I would just sit and watch them because it, it, the reality is they had their cell phones. So they was going to go upstairs and watch it anyway. So I needed to at least watch it with them and then we can dialogue and talk. That, I bring that up because we've been watching together as a family, Married at First Sight. And I had never seen this show before. And I guess they did an edition of the show in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we've been watching that um, season. I will tell you that Mr. Chuck has been dropping some knowledge about relationships as a part of this show you know when we're having some debrief um it's interesting because you know many wives are where are like where's the first husband's club you know so i've heard that many times uh so i don't know what's on the horizon for him i know i have him he doesn't know this but i have him on my list to be a guest on the interview segment that we do. I'm gonna do a panel of husbands and I have him on the list to participate in that. And I might have to check, tap into Jeff too. He got, I had to get his contact information and maybe tap into him and have him be a part of that panel. But um, he, he, I don't know what's gonna happen, but what, this is what I will say to you. And this has been true for all of our marriage. He probably has seen more potential in me than I saw in myself. He is probably my biggest cheerleader and supporter. He has never been threatened by anything I do or any achievement I've achieved. He's always planting seeds to encourage me to go forward. And that alone is priceless because of the demand um, in terms of my availability for trying to do this and, you know, do all the social media pieces. I've actually got my girls on board. It's a family affair now. Everybody is working on the First Wives Club. And so um, it, it, it's just so uh, wonderful to have him support that way. So it remains to be seen, Chanel. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen um, how he may be encouraged or inspired, but he was dropping some tips, you know, as a part of watching those episodes around relationships. So we'll see. Anybody else have any questions for Denise? I just want to say congratulations on it. It just, it seems so powerful. Um, and in this um, century, um, we as women need to stick together. So I, I commend you for um, allowing, uh, for following what God has put into your heart and for helping families and marriages, which we don't see those big numbers much anymore. Um, so I just want to say congratulations. I commend you and thank you for sharing your information. Okay. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. And again, thank you guys for the invitation. This was so priceless. Thank you, Chanel, for thinking of me. Um, it was so great to make your acquaintance. And if you guys ever need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Well, Denise, thank you so much. You've been so informative. And we will be following uh, the First Wise Club. And we will be letting people know about your book and how to get it. OK, thank you so much. You guys have a great evening. You too. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, guys, so it was great, Chanel, having Denise on the show tonight. She is such a jewel. She really, really is. And I wish we had more time. She can go on and on and on about the, the amazing things that she does and that she's a part of. And like I said, I have, I've been a part of it, especially from the beginning. And it has definitely been beneficial in my life. And same thing, I've been spreading the word just to have that network and that community of women across the globe. It's not just here in your backyard, because sometimes, like my best friend, she's biased. I can't call her for nothing because she's always <laughs> camp, camp, camp. <laughs> But it's great to have, you know, to hear those stories of, of inspiration and, you know, overcoming challenges or just all that type of support that we need, especially right now. Like, like you said, Julie, you're not seeing those numbers of marriages 
um, you know, last in years upon years upon years, and we should. We so should. Yeah. I'm glad that she's. It's, it's nice to know that it's out there because you do have some women that are struggling in their marriages, you know, and to be around women that can inspire them, keep them motivated, and you know, give them different tools to be able to kind of improve and bring their husband into the fold and see where they can kind of blend things a little better. Um, they said it was the first two or three years was the roughest part of the marriage. So um, knowing that a program out there, a lot of women are going to appreciate that. And if we have to mark Jeff's calendar, I want to see the one when he's on that panel because I can just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, to your point too, Alethea, I was going to mention, I, I felt that it was refreshing to hear Jeff, you talk about and even mention the love languages because you don't hear yeah. me talk about that. Yeah. So it's for you to hear you bring that up and to talk about your marriage is so, so refreshing. And I think that when you are become, when you do become a part of that panel, um, speaking about that will, will bring some, some significance to the conversation. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just know that um, it's the little things in, in a relationship and marriage that, that can go a long way. And a lot of people don't really think about it, but it's something you have to be aware of and be just in tune with your partner. And the more you know you understand your partner and the more you don't push their buttons, either purposely or accidentally, the better off you will be. And um, the phrase happy wife, happy life is, is very true. If the woman isn't happy in a relationship, the house is doomed, <laughs> it's doomed. <laughs> It's the truth. It is. It's doomed. The, the husband can be mad, but no one cares. The life goes on. But if the wife is upset, oh, goodness, nothing is peaceful. And even the plants are going to wither if the wife is mad. <laughs> but you know what I also want to say that the love language is not just for intimate relationships, but it can be used across any type of relationship, friendships, yeah. relationships. If you figure out what makes that person um, that will feel their love language. I, I can guarantee you. If everybody could do just a little bit of that, I, th I think the world would be a better place. But. Oh, that, that definitely works in friendships, in mm -hmm. business, all, and you just got to know the person. And I think one problem a lot of us have is we're so self-absorbed. It's all about me, 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 me. If you learn that other person, you can get a lot more out of them than you ever thought possible. I'm not talking about getting over on people, just getting them on your side and help and they can help you get where you want to be and everyone's happy at the same time so learning them love languages is very very important and i learned that um because i was in sales and i learned those different triggers of how to get people you know get them involved and get them activated and get them excited so you have to learn how to tap into people and you can use it um like you say for anyone and everyone's going to be happy in the end I agree, Jeff. I know, Julie, I'm not sure if um, they did it, but I did it when I worked for TIA as a project manager. There was the red hats. And so they were teaching us these different color hats to pick the person's personality, right? And so learning how to, you know, figure out a person's personality, you learn how to work with them in a project, meaning I speak to this person one way, but then I got to speak to another person this way. And so when my husband and I, when we did the the love languages uh, through uh, counseling, it came to me the same way, like being able to figure it out. Like, okay, I'm figure some of this stuff out, but there was other stuff that um, you get some men that don't want to let go. Like um, some men that don't want to be too vulnerable or made to feel too vulnerable because then they think they're weak if they show their vulnerabilities. And so when you have men that, you know, want to keep on that tough rough, uh, those love languages are an easy way to help mellow them up a little bit. And it can be good for a relationship. And Chanel, you could use it in that S3. <laughs> I'm so glad, Jeff, you asked that question because that was one of mine I wanted Denise to touch on. It's so important um, just to know what yours is, to know what your spouses are. And then I want to say they even have them for like kids. You know, I have, th I mean, th all three of mine are completely different. One wants that physical touch. All he wants to do is just be held and touched and rubbed. And the other one is just those words of affirmation. You did a great job today. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for helping. And they're just like, oh yeah, what else can I do? What else can I do? So it's really important to just know one, like, your, like you said, yourself and, you know, what really makes somebody else feels, feel, feel good. You know, you give and you'll receive. So I agree. I'm, I'm 
I'm happy we kind of sparked on that. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Today, it was a great show. Thank you so much again, Chanel. Um, having Denise on the show uh, prompted a lot of conversation and, and trusting that once people see the show today, um, it's going to make, and I'm glad you put the book up. So we did a promo. <laughs> we did a promo. She put the book up. So she did I'm promo. sure it's old. I, I, this is from way back in the day. So I'm sure there may be some new versions. Um, yeah, this is super old. But I, I really, and I wish we would have gotten that information from Denise about the app. I think that's a really on-the-go tool that I think we can use. So maybe we can find that information out and yeah, share. I'll go back to the recording and I'll see if I can pull it up. I know on Facebook, because I found it, um, through Facebook, there's a Love Languages page on Facebook. Being kind of cooped up, and it looks like we may end up going on lockdown again with the uptick in COVID. Um, I know in North Carolina is mandatory for the face masks now. Mandatory, mandatory. I was at the post office shipping face masks <laughs> today, so making sure everybody has a face mask and everything. So I think that's great information to share, um, regardless of the status of your relationship, be it if you're dating, if you're engaged, if you're married. Those are still good um, information to follow and um, and grow and strengthen your relationship. Right. I was quickly doing a um, search on my phone to see if I could just find the app. I do see one. Um, it's called the Five Love Languages, but um, I obviously haven't gotten into it yet to see what it's all about. But I think if um, if you go into your app store on your phone, it's, you know, it may come up, but we want to get the one that Denise mentioned as well to make yeah. sure it's the right one. She said Gary Chapman. Yes. Yep. And so um, I just Googled that and it has all, so I'll make sure I post that, um, put another promo out there for her and the yeah. recommendations. So people be able to get that. So that's going to be great. And it's going to be great. So you guys have any parting words for tonight's show that you'd like to say? We'll start with Jeff. Okay, I was on mute. Okay, <laughs> um, as far as relationships, communication, just talk. Um, what I learned um, in my relationship is you don't have to have the last word. It's not a, um, it's not a competition, like you said, it's not a competition. You, you're, you're supposed to be a team. If you work together, you can overcome anything. So it's not one of those I told you so type deals. It's not one of those I was right, you were wrong, ha, ha, ha. You don't have time for that. You know, you, you've been out all day, you've been working all day. You want to come home to a peaceful house, learn, learn your spouse's love language, do what you can to help them because they're probably just as tired as you, and just work together. Do not try to outdo someone or make them feel bad. I mean, that's supposed to be your partner. So why you want to put them down or pick a fight with your partner? That's the last person you should be trying to do something like that with. It's, it's just work together, just communicate and understand that if you made a mistake, just own up to it. And if your partner made a mistake, you know, um, don't beat them over the head with it. Just to say, okay, you made a mistake, whatever. Let's just move on. Let's just overcome this and, and deal with it. And I'm talking about just like little things like you don't do something you're supposed to do in the house or, you know, y'all had a disagreement, you know, and you made a mistake and you were wrong. Okay, you were wrong. I've been wrong before too. Let's just over, let's just deal with it, move on and let's just move on and just strengthen our relationship so we can, you know, continue on. Yeah, Jeff just created another hashtag. So instead of just ask Jeff, preach, preach, Jeff, preach. <laughs> Preach, Jeff, preach, because the brothers, there's some brothers out there that need to hear that. They but it's the truth. That one over. It's the truth. I mean, we don't have to, all, why, why do we have to fight? If, if we're in a relationship together, why do we have to fight? Why do I always have to be the one that's right? And why do I always have to nitpick you? What's the point of, of a relationship like that? Who wants to come home to something like that? That's Thank men you. or women. Who wants to come home to, to pick a fight? Who wants to come home to be the recipient of a fight? Why? 
why life is too stressful i'm 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 very laid back i'm not finna go through all that i'm not finna <laughs> argue with you i don't have time for that i don't have the energy for it I mean, why? Let's just, come on, let's just chill. <laughs> let's have some fun. Let's relax. Let's do what we got to do, of course. But at the same time, let's just chill. Come on, let's, come on. Let's and just that is the flip side with Jeff, uh, to just point that it's the flip side because there are people that come home and they're dumping. They're dumping their day out on their spouse or their partner. They're dumping their day. And a lot of people are in that mode, you know. Um, so, again, preach, Jeff. <laughs> Preach, Jeff, preach. Well, dumping your day is, is okay if, you, if you're venting. That's cool. But if you're like really just pounding on someone because they did something wrong or you're just looking for something to, to fight and fuss and argue about, that's, that's not acceptable. No one, no one should have to put up with that. And no one should be doing that to someone. If you got to do all that, then maybe you all need to just have a real serious conversation and, and see if you need to be together. Life is too short. Yeah. And now a lot of people are in that boat as well. A lot of people. Janelle? Jeff, I think a lot of that stems from, like you talked about, those those hidden issues or those underlying issues. When it gets to that point where you're just kind of, you know, fussing about every small little thing, it's something deeper than that. Um, so two things I would leave you guys with would be don't sweat the small stuff. In the beginning, my husband leaves a toothpaste on the counter after he brushes his teeth. In the beginning, I'd be like, oh my gosh, put the tooth. I mean, literally, all you have to do is open the drawer, slide the toothpaste in it, and close it. That's it. Is it really that serious? Do I really need to fuss about this every time? Or can I just open the drawer, put the toothpaste in it, and keep it moving? So I would say don't sweat the small stuff. Another thing is um, just be intentional. Be intentional about loving your partner, communicating with your partner, and spending time with each other. Um, just those little things. It may be you're not going to be able to, you know, watch Law & Order on Thursday at 10 o'clock because he wants to watch, you know, some Kung Fu movie, you know, on the couch. So, and that's okay. I can record it and catch it the next day. So just be intentional would be what I would, I would leave you guys with. That's a good one. Julie? Honey, I got to have my, my crime, uh, criminal minds day. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, when I get married, if we're going to have to compromise on that. <laughs> um, but seriously, two things I, I want to leave is just um, know, um, know who you are within yourself. Be happy with who you are within yourself and love yourself. Because if you don't know who you are, then no one else can make you happy but you. And then there's an old saying, the second thing I want to say is the, there's an old saying, you have to teach people how to treat you, you know, and that's having a conversation. I think, Jeff, you touched on it, communication, um, you know, communicate with your partner what it takes for you. Mine is quality time, so I love quality time. And then Chanel, you, you mentioned it to be intentional. And then lastly, my favorite saying, I just want to say, um, find that place of peace that brings you joy. And most of all, be healthy, be empowered, be resilient. Thank you, Julie. So for me, in last words, um, I think the biggest thing that we can all take from this is not losing yourself within someone. So you can lose yourself in love and affection. But when you lose who you are, because you're trying to pull yourself they can't understand where you're at and the level that you see. They need a level of foundation, but don't give up parts of yourself. I think definitely when they're within your relationships and they're not that good. So, with everything that's going on now, if you know that you're in that relationship, don't stop being you. I be the best woman, best wife, best mom that you can be. But don't let someone steal your joy. Find that love. Keep that love. Live it. Do it. Be powerful. Be empowered. Don't lose yourself in it. And by that, I'll say, great show, guys. And we're going to say good night. Good night. See you guys See you later. Guys later. Not everybody. Not everybody. Great show. Great show. Have a good night. Good night.